All right, so you can't afford your own cameraman to follow you around, zooming in and out, and panning all around. Yeah, me neither. So that's why in this video, I'm gonna teach you how to create your own realistic camera movements in DaVinci Resolve. All of that stuff and more coming up. But first, if you're new here, my name is Billy Ripka, and I make weekly DaVinci Resolve tutorials about different effects, transitions, and workflows that'll help you become a better editor. So if you wanna level up your editing skills, click the subscribe button and the bell notification to stay up to date on the newest videos put out. But let's get into it. So now that we have DaVinci Resolve open, we're gonna go ahead and start creating these realistic camera movements. So right off the bat, we're gonna drag our clip onto our timeline. Now there's two ways we can make this effect. First way is in the edit tab. Now I'm just gonna straight up tell you, like this is the worst way to do it. It's because motion blur isn't native and the keyframe editor is literal trash. I mean, it's horrible guys, like it's really bad. So the way that we're gonna do this is by using one node in the fusion tab where we can just fake all of our camera movements and make them look high quality and believable. So we're gonna jump into fusion. So we have our media in node and our media out node as usual. And all that we're gonna do to make these fake camera movements is to grab the transform node up here on the hot bar. And while holding down shift, drag it in onto the line until that line turns blue and then just drop it in. In the inspector tab, we're gonna add a keyframe under size and center, and then move forward eight frames using our right arrow key. Then under size, we're gonna zoom in on my face like this, because you know, we gotta get a zoom in on that mug. And you can see once we actually move this, it automatically adds a keyframe. So then we're just gonna use our center Y to adjust the up and down position and then center X for our left and right. Now just move forward about 20 frames or so and manually click on the keyframe button. The reason why we're doing this is because we don't want any movement during this 20 frame section. So we're ultimately just locking in this steady movement. And also this keyframe is gonna be the beginning of our new movements. We can move forward about eight more frames. So on the center X, I'm gonna grab it and just drag it up so that the frame moves to the left side like this. And once again, as you guys see, it automatically adds a keyframe. So then move forward another eight frames with your arrow keys. Then we're just gonna move the center X down to about 300 or so, so that it moves to the right. So then once again, you can see that the keyframe was automatically placed. So now that we've done our zoom in, our left to right movements, I wanna actually zoom out and recenter all the stuff. So as I already mentioned, we have our keyframe under our center. Now we actually wanna add a keyframe under our size because during that whole left and right movement, we didn't want our size to change at all. Now we're just gonna move forward eight frames or so, and then under size, we're gonna hit this default button in the middle, and then under center X and Y, we're gonna just type in 0.5. And then you'll see that it just returns to that default position. So now if we just go ahead and watch it, you could see that it looks like crap. I mean, it is not smooth at all. Like it looks like trash. So we're just gonna like, fix the trash right now and make it look good. We're just gonna go ahead and hit the spline tab right here and then just resize the window because honestly, it's way too small. Then we're just gonna hit this checkbox next to the transform so we can actually see all of our keyframes then just hit fit to zoom. So yeah, we can definitely see that that is not smooth. So if we highlight this whole thing right here and then hit S, you'll see that it looks all nice and smooth and stuff, but you may notice that the flat places where we want our fake camera movement to stop are curved. And that means that we'll have a constant motion all throughout this whole thing. And that's just not what we want. So I'm just gonna go ahead and hit control Z. So what we're gonna do is highlight the first group of keyframes that's leading up to like this plateau. And then we're gonna hit S. And then we're gonna move to the second group of keyframes frames that's moving down from the plateau and we're gonna hit S also. And then we'll just do the same exact thing for the other one. We'll take the first group of keyframes that's moving up into this plateau and we'll hit S. And then the second group of keyframes that looks like it's just moving up again and we'll once again hit S. So what we've done here is we've made the parts that we want smooth, smooth, and the parts that we don't want any movement, we just make sure that there isn't any movement. This smoothing out part right here is what is so complicated to do in the edit tab version. Like it's just such a freaking pain in the butt. That and there is no motion blur. But my friend, we are not done just yet. We have to add some high quality motion blur. So in the inspector tab, click on the settings menu right here and then hit the checkbox next to motion blur. So now I'm just gonna bring up the quality of motion blur because we gotta get that like good looking motion blur in these videos. I mean, you can't have crap motion blur. So once we got all that stuff down, let's go ahead and check out what we've made. All right, so there you have it, creating fake camera movements in DaVinci Resolve. If you thought this video was helpful, give it a like and also share it with your friends so that they can put fake camera movements in their videos too. I just wanna take a moment and just thank you guys. Thank you so much for just 
I mean, we're pretty much at 20K, if not past 20K at this point. So I just wanna thank you guys so much for all of the support and all of the comments and all of the likes and everything that you guys do. I love serving you guys. I love sharing DaVinci Resolve. I love hanging out and talking and goofing off and stuff like that. So really just thank you from the bottom of my heart for just all that you guys do. You have no idea how much this means to me. I mean, I'm just blown away, honestly. So seriously, thank you. But anyway, recently I created a group called DaVinci Resolved on Facebook and it is totally free to join, by the way. This is a group of video editors and DaVinci Resolve users all coming together to learn from one another so that ultimately we can make better videos and just grow in our program knowledge. So if you guys are interested in joining the group, it is completely free. Click the link down below to join it. I would love to see you there. I would love to talk to you and I'd really just love to see what you are creating. So anyway, if you want more videos like this, click on the top for a playlist with all of my DaVinci Resolve tutorials or click on the bottom for a video that YouTube thinks that you would like. But until the next one, peace.